Hi, it's Dr. Fox, licensed psychologist in the state of Texas. And in this video, we're going to talk about the push-pull relationship. Now, you know when you're in a relationship and you want to pull that person close, but then fear gets in the way, and then you push them away anyway. Now, this is what's called the push-pull relationship pattern. And we're going to discuss it in this video. We're going to pick it apart, and then I'm going to tell you the five things you can do to fix it. So let's get into it and like, share, and subscribe, and let's go. The push-pull relationship pattern is a common one seen in many individuals, those with BPD and BPD traits included. This plays out in all sorts of relationships, not just in romantic ones, but we often conceptualize it as a romantic destructive pattern. Now, initially, you can have this intensive romantic idealization of the relationship, right? You just met the person, you think that they're fantastic, you think they're saying all the right things, they're doing the right things, they touch you in a great way, they, they you know, just, you just feel like they're just connecting to you. It's this honeymoon phase, right? And the honeymoon phase, everything is supposed to be magical and stuff like that. And I'm not saying it's not. That's what the honeymoon phase is, right? Is that we get caught in these things. We get caught up in this other person and we start to idealize this other individual. And we start to feel a greater sense of connection to that individual. And this is normal. This is a normal part of the honeymoon phase. Okay? And what happens is, is that as you go through the honeymoon phase, you're in that honeymoon phase for a while. A lot of times, sometimes... A lot of times honeymoon phase is usually a couple weeks. Sometimes it can go a couple months. Okay, that would be a long honeymoon phase. But it could happen, right? And what happens is, is that fear rises as flaws and other issues begin to show. As others cannot fit the image you have created in your mind about this person, which activates that fear of abandonment, isolation, loneliness, and emptiness. Now this prompts you to act in maladaptive ways to test the relationship. It's like holding the idea that if I blow it up and it doesn't all burn down, it must be good. However, anything that doesn't get burned down gets retested until it's engulfed in flames. What happens, you end up in a lose-lose situation, right? Because if they pass that one test, there's another test. Because then there's another test. Then there's another test. And there, because what, what you're doing is is that you're pushing that person away until they finally go away. And it, it's this internal belief, it's that core content of abandonment, of rejection, of emptiness and fear. And the fear is actually the surface content, excuse me. And the surface content is what is driven by that abandonment and that emptiness. And it's the fear, right, that that person is gonna go away, that you're gonna lose that person. So what you do is you create tests to push that person away. Now, this is all unconscious. This is part of that immediate type of reaction where you're not thinking about what you're doing because you're trying to fulfill that core content. And if this is confusing, it's confusing for so many people. That's why the push-pull relationship is very, very you know, confusing, particularly for the other person as well as for yourself. And it's important to try to get a handle on it, and that's what we're gonna do. So the dissolution of the relationship seems to prove the fear, abandonment, isolation, loneliness, and emptiness as valid. And this empowers your BPD and its internalized ideas of how relationships are supposed to be. Perhaps this is an old pattern you're playing out. Perhaps it fits with how you see your worth. Well, either way, it plays into your negative core content. And what happens is now that that person is gone, then you pursue them. So they've been pushed away, but here comes the pull part. This is your promise it'll never happen again. You can't live without them. This part of the push-pull pattern is being played out. You want them close now that they're distant. Now they take steps closer to you. Perhaps the relationship starts to repair, right? But this reignites the fears and the tests resume and this plays out over and over and over again. This is a painful experience for anyone. And the truth is that it can be a hard one for you to hear. But we're going to talk in truths. And it's not something that's in your partner. It's in your core content, your conceptualization of relationships and your fears. So let me give you some suggestions that may help you. Now, if the push-pull pattern is one that you play out in your life, whether you're the recipient or the initiator, okay? So 
First, recognize the pattern is inside you and it's not something in your partner. If you don't see your part in the process, you, you can't change it. We have to embrace the responsibility right, of falling in, into this pattern. So it's really important to do that. The second step is identify those fears. I want you to write them down. Right? Find a piece of paper, write it in your phone, right? whatever they're about and where they come from. Perhaps it's mom, dad, early trauma, or relationships. Write out those fears. Write what you're afraid of if you get close to this person. Third, I want you to write out what you genuinely feel you deserve in relationships. This may be really hard, as you may hold some pretty negative ideas about yourself, your worth, and your importance in the world and in your relationships too. But you need, you need to know, and someone needs to tell you, so I'm here to tell you that you deserve stability, kindness, compassion, patience, and all of those things that help us bloom in life. You have to believe inside to make it part of your life on the outside. It can't, it's really hard, I think, as adults for us to go outside in. As kids, we do, right? Because because we're consuming, right? We're little sponges and we're taking all this stuff in, you know. But as adults, then it's inside out. It's how we believe that influences how we see our world and how we interact with it. And the push-pull relationship is a huge part of that. Fourth, I want you to challenge those negative views and beliefs. You want to work on your core content and accentuate the positive about you. We all have negatives. That's true. Even, even me, right? But we all have positives as well. You want to work to enhance your positives. Write them down, right? Perhaps you're cute, you're fit, you're funny, you're open to exploring life, you like to read, you know a lot of facts. Perhaps you're good at Jeopardy. That would be awesome. Whatever it may be, right? Whatever they are. Wear those on your sleeve. That's what you're proud of. That's what you carry with you. That's what bolsters right, your sense of interacting with the world. And that's what you carry with you. Not those negatives. That's not what we want to do. Those are the powerful things that make you you. And that's what we want to do. And fifth, I want you to embrace the idea that you deserve good and stable relationships. You may not have a blueprint for it, but that's what mental health providers can be for. They can help you do that. Is a relationship give and take, sharing, caring, patience, someone being reliable and not harsh and judgmental. Describe what your healthy relationship looks like. If you don't know what it looks like, how will you know you found it, lost it, missed it, or if you have it? And, you know, I think a lot of folks have the idea, well, I'll know it when I see it. That, that tends to be a fallacy because if you can't map it out, you're going to drive right by it and you're not even going to notice it. So we got to stop. We got to write, write these things out and do those five steps. I'm telling you that, that they will help you. Please utilize them. Write this stuff down and don't just think, oh, I write it down so it's magically going to, going to change things. It's not. It takes time. It takes practice. You have to unlearn the negative and learn the positive and embrace the positive. You don't have to follow the push-pull pattern. You can embrace the intimate, connected pattern that I believe a lot of us do genuinely seek. So I hope this is helpful for you. Please leave some comments on your view of relationships as well as the push-pull pattern that you may see in you. That would be really great. As well as if you were able to overcome it, please leave some comments that can help other people too because I think a lot of folks go, go through this, those with BPD and those without. Okay, so it's really important. Please like, share, and subscribe. Check me out on Instagram and, and TikTok and all that other stuff. And, That'd be awesome. And thank you very much. Please have a good day and please take care of yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye.